through my project machine learning for action identification. So it's a pretty short presentation. I'm just going to talk about my project, what I'm trying to do, and the way I'm trying to accomplish what I'm trying to do. So this is image classification. Um, here we see a neural network doing pretty well at classifying all these cars, this person, a bicycle, and even a traffic light, which I couldn't see at first because it's like so far in the back. So for image classification, neural networks have done very well. So I'm trying to do a similar thing in image classification, but instead of classifying objects, things, and people, what I'm trying to do now is classify what people are doing. So that's how it's action identification, and it's a little bit different because it's less um, explicit than what we see here, you know? Like, if we see a person, it's less about what is that person, like what race are they, and more about what are they doing. And that's what I'm trying to figure out. So the way I'm going to do that is by using um, machine learning. So here we see a convolutional neural network. So convolutional neural networks are neural networks that are made uh, basically just for image classification, and they do very well at this task of image classification. Um, so the way they work is that we see this image of a dog right here, right? If we were to feed this to a neural network, uh, it would do very poorly at classifying this image of a dog. So what we have to do is we have to perform the convolution operation on this image of the dog. So what the convolution operation does is it basically takes this image of a dog and then it uh, outputs the image we see on the top, which is just like the edges of the dog, right? And that's a lot better for us because now it's like less, pix uh, less, less pixels to read for the neural network, and that makes it uh, a little bit clearer for it. So that's the convolution part on the left side, and then on the right side is the actual neural network itself. So what the neural network is going to do is it's going to break down uh, the image of the dog, uh, the convoluted image of the dog, into its individual pixels. It's going to read those pixels, and then it's going to go to the next layer in the neural network, and it's going to try to figure out some patterns in those pixels. And then the next uh, pattern is going to find patterns in the patterns. And so the, when we get to the output layer, what it's going to do is gonna, it's going to use all these patterns to figure out whether this is a cat or whether this is a dog. So I created this graphic. Uh, originally the image was an assembly line and I just put a bunch of cats and dogs on every box in the assembly line. Because this is a really good metaphor for what supervised learning really is. So supervised learning is one of the ways you can train neural networks. So the way supervised learning works is essentially the way you train a child with flashcards. You have a question on the front and then on the back would be like the answer to that question. So that's the same exact thing we're doing with neural networks. So we see an image of a cat here. And then on top of cat is a label that says cat. So that's essentially how neural networks are trained. What they do is they see the image of the cat, and then they have a label, and that label will be like a number identifier that says this is a cat. So what we do is we feed the neural network a large data set of cat and dog images. Well, not like cat and dog images, but just for this example, cat and dog images. And what it will do is it'll see those uh, images, and it'll take a guess initially, and then it'll use the label to try to figure out, okay, my guess was wrong, how can I make my guess better next time? So basically, impacting applications. So this is another graphic I made, and it's a pretty terrifying thing. Uh, I just took like that box for my uh, vision, and I just put human features on it, because if you think about it, this project could be used for some pretty messed up stuff, as we're seeing in like Hong Kong, the police are using machine learning to basically identify protesters and see like, okay, who is the worst protester? And then they just arrest that person later on in the day. So something like this could be used um, to just find protesters, you know, identify what they're doing, what behaviors they're doing, and then just arrest them. So this kind of project could lead to, I don't know, something very dystopian. So the reason I wanted to do this project was because maybe it would be trying to focus on something like actions in the classroom, like some students are on their phone or writing their tests. Maybe we could kind of like, take the conversation away from that sort of dystopian society and towards something that's more suitable for what we want, not this. That's what I'm saying.